Hi, I'm Curtis Strange, and I'm honored to have been asked by the United States Golf Association to introduce the official video of our national championship. It has been made possible by a grant from our friends at Rolex. Ten years have passed since I won my back-to-back -back U.S. Opens. This year's championship is held at Ponders No. 2, one of the world's greatest courses and one of my favorites. It was here at Pondhurst where I won the North and South Amateur in both 75 and 76, as well as where I got my start on tour, qualifying here in 1977. Back when I was getting started, youth golf played a major role in my life, and I take pride that the proceeds from this video will help support junior golf programs. Remember, golf has no future without our kids. So thanks to the USGA and Rolex, I know you will enjoy our national championship, the 1999 United States Open. At long last, storied Pinehurst number two, host to our national championship. It is here where 156 of the world's best golfers will converge in pursuit of golf's ultimate prize. In the end, only one of these men will endure golf's ultimate test and stand alone as United States Open champion. The United States Golf Association proudly presents the 1999 United States Open Championship. Payne Reigns. Hi everybody, I'm Dan Hicks, just outside the clubhouse here at storied Pinehurst number two. This Donald Ross masterpiece has charmed and challenged golfers for nearly a century. And it takes center stage for the first time as host of the national championship. And it promises to be a national championship unlike any other. Donald Ross serves up 18 fiendish greens. So not only are you going to have to have power and precision, you have to deal with these closely shaved greens which fall off in every direction. Slightly arid shots roll right off of the target. So you can add a few more words to the list of requirements for this year's U.S. Open champion. Imagination, creativity, fearlessness, and finesse. This is the final U.S. Open of the 20th century, and the United States Golf Association just may have saved its best for last. After months of anticipation, the game's finest took on the challenge of this fabled golf course. Would this legendary Donald Ross masterpiece withstand the power and might of the world's best? The first to make his mark was Phil Mickelson. With his wife back home expecting their first child, Mickelson was playing inspired golf. Here at 13 for birdie and a share of the lead. After another birdie at 14, he alone held the lead but no one was taking advantage of the Donald Ross bull-shaped greens. Like everyone in this open, Mickelson would need an extra supply of patience. Alongside Mickelson, David Duvall, a patient player many had predicted would win this open, and at 15, he showed why. A birdie here took him to two under in quest of his 12th win in 18 months and his first major. But Mickelson was not giving up any ground. After a good chip shot, this to keep the lead. Both players parred the difficult 16th, and then Duvall took dead aim at the par 3 17th. This was for a share of the lead at three under par. And it was never in doubt. At the end of the first round, the world's number one ranked player found himself in a familiar spot at the top of the leaderboard with a bogey-free 67. Duvall appeared focused and determined, but Mickelson was also a man with a mission. I didn't fly all the way across the country and be away from my wife who's expecting to have a top 10 finish. I'm out here to attack and to see if I can win a golf tournament. Uh, otherwise, it's not worth my time. I'd rather be home with my wife. His par at 18 capped a strong opening round, matching Duvall's three under par, 67.
Would the scores of both Mickelson and Duvall stand? A constant drizzle had softened the greens, but many players would still feel the wrath of Pinehurst number two. Less than perfect approach shots would be denied. Greens in regulation for the field as a whole was just 52% in this opening round. But veteran players with major championship experience found inventive ways to par or better, despite the conditions. One of them, a North Carolina native, Scott Hoke, had posted five top ten finishes at U.S. Opens in the 1990s. And at the par 3 sixth, that experience would shine through. Hoke clearly had a feel for the Pinehurst Sandhills. He would finish with a 71. But even a few non-locals were also getting the hang of the bunkers. A bit of artistry at 11 from the reigning Masters champion, Jose Maria Olathabal. But after a disappointing 75, he withdrew, admitting to an anger-induced injury. The 1996 champion, Steve Jones, knows one way to handle U.S. Open greens is to avoid putting them. That birdie at 10 took him to one under par. Meanwhile, Hal Sutton was making his birdies the old-fashioned way, with solid ball striking. Sutton would finish it one under par. And so did the defending PGA champion Vijay Singh after getting this one up and down at 18. But some of Thursday's best scores came from less prominent players. One of them, Paraguay's Carlos Franco. Paired with Mickelson and Duvall, Franco held his own with a round of 69. Billy Mayfair had a front nine of 33 before facing this putt for birdie at 10. That got him to three under. Then at 18 with a chance to take sole possession of the lead. Regardless, the 67 stood as Mayfair's best score in eight U.S. Open appearances. As an amateur, David Bergano Jr. won two USGA titles in the Public Links Championship, but on Thursday he played like a pro. A par here at 18 gave him a 68. Who hit the most greens on Thursday? A young man from Tokyo named Konami Yoko. The putting surface at number eight was one of 15 greens he hit in regulation, and this shot also gave him another birdie chance. This was to go minus three. Yoko would finish the day with an impressive two under par 68. But perhaps the day's biggest surprise was Paul Goitis. This putt at 17 for a share of the lead. But with three under par, hold up. This is the first time in 23 years that the USGA has visited a course untested in open championship golf. The rough this year is not the open's usual six inches in height. It has been halved to just three. But the fairways have been narrowed, in some areas to just 24 yards in width. Those who find the rough will have no easy task hitting and holding the famed turtleback greens of Pinehurst number two. These are targets designed to turn a slight error into a costly one. The genius behind Pinehurst number two is Donald Ross. His arrival in the village at the turn of the century would have an everlasting impact. James Tufts, one of the USGA's pioneers, first lured Ross to Pinehurst. At the age of 27, Ross transformed the existing number one course into a championship test and began construction of number two. In 1907, his gem was complete, although he would continue to tinker with it for the rest of his life. A native of Scotland, Ross made full use of the hollows and swells of the sand hills to create the most distinctive putting greens America had ever seen. Ross so loved this part of the world that he built his home alongside the third fairway of number two. His spirit is still very much here, and the legacy of his genius will remain in Pinehurst forever. On Thursday afternoon, Phil Mickelson could relax a bit while others pursued his three under 67. 
However, it had been a frustrating day for Greg Norman. He was not at his sharpest, and even when he was, he fell victim to the Donald Ross design. Norman opened with a three over par, 73. For Davis Love III, however, the ball was spinning his way. Love was one over when he hit this one to 13. And with help from this birdie, he'd go into the clubhouse with a round of 70. Meanwhile, the defending champion got off to a solid start with two pars and this putt for birdie at the third. But Jansen would then falter to a 74 for the day. The day's fastest start came from none other than John Daly, who birdied one and two, hit an enormous drive at the third, and then played this deft pitch to set up his third straight three. He would give a stroke back at the eight, but just as quickly, regain it at the ninth. At 18, he had this for a share of the lead. A disappointing finish to an outstanding round of 68, two under for the championship. 1997 British Open champion Justin Leonard had just birdied 13 to go one under par when he hit this approach to 14. That would get him to minus two. Leonard would finish with a 69. Along with Leonard at one under was the straight hitting Jim Furyk, whose accuracy was on full display at the par three 17th. Furyk would card an impressive one under 69 for the day. Late in the day came a charge from Rocco Mediate. Two under at the 13th when he played this approach. He would pick up another birdie there and would move into a tie for the lead, but a double bogey six at 18 would drop him back to minus one. One year earlier, Payne Stewart led the Open after 54 holes before losing by just one shot, and on Thursday, he was back on the attack. This approach to the 10th set up a birdie to take him to two under par. Four pars followed, and then Stewart gave himself a chance for a rare birdie at the 15th. Dead center, and into a tie for the lead. Another player on a quest was Tiger Woods, intent on showing that he has the kind of game that can win U.S. Opens. With his tee shot at 17, there seemed to be little doubt about his ability to make something happen at Pinehurst. The eventual birdie took him to one under par. One hole later, he had this for a birdie birdie finish. Tiger Woods headed to the clubhouse, one stroke off the first day lead. Back behind Woods, Stewart still out on the course with two holes to play. And this great tee shot set up a birdie opportunity to get him to four under par and sole possession of the lead. But like the rest of the field, Stewart found out just how exacting number two can be. This is a great golf course. And if you manage your game around here, then you, you can shoot in the red. If you quit thinking out there one time, all of a sudden you're gonna flip it over a green and then you really got your work cut out for you. This golf course just tests everything. And it, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great challenge for us this week. Stewart's only bogey of the day came at 18, and he finished with a 68, one stroke off the lead. After 18 holes, four players shared the honors at the top after rounds of three under par 67. Another five checked in with 68s. A total of 23 players managed to get around number two with scores under par, while 11 equaled the par of 70. highly touted players stayed well within the range of the leaders.
Thursday's clouds and rain gave way to sunny skies and light winds on Friday, and that put some fire in Pinehurst number two. The main challenge was not getting out of the long grass, it was staying on the short grass. On this day, the average score of the 156 players would be two and a half shots higher than in round one. And no one took a harder hit than John Daly. His round was a struggle from start to finish, and his total, 77, was nine shots worse than on Thursday. But Daly's misery had company. David Bergano Jr. also followed a 68 with a 77. Tim Heron, who had shot 69 on Thursday, was determined not to stumble, and when this one dropped, he had 33, the lowest front side score of the day. His nickname may be Lumpy, but his putting stroke is plenty smooth. Heron would finish the day with a 72, plus one for the championship. Meanwhile, two of Thursday's unsung heroes, Billy Mayfair and Paul Goitis, were hanging tough. Goitis showed some early brilliance with this approach to number two. The end result, a 74 to join Tim Heron at 141. At the par five fourth, Mayfair gave himself a chance to take sole possession of the lead. Unfortunately for Mayfair, he would not capitalize on that birdie opportunity. Mayfair's only major stumble came at the ninth. After missing the green with his tee shot, he was forced to take on Donald Ross and lost. Mayfair took a double bogey there, finished two over for the round and one under for 36 holes. For Hal Sutton, things were looking up at the ninth. He was one over for his round when this putt tracked right into the center of the cup. Sutton, with a round of 70, joined Mayfair at 139. It had been a two-day struggle for Jack Nicklaus in his first major championship since hip replacement surgery. Although he showed a flash of the Golden Bear here, Jack would miss the cut at plus 13. But he wasn't the only prominent player to have the weekend off. Greg Norman faded with a 78. Two-time US Open champion Ernie Els followed his opening round 72 with a six over par 76. And the struggling Nick Faldo bogeyed three of his last four holes to miss the cut by just one stroke. But Colin Montgomery kept the international hopes alive with a second straight 72. And Jesper Parnovic did even better with a pair of 71s that put him in good position with two rounds to go, especially if he could summon some more of this magic. Much of the drama in round two came from the two young stars looking for their first major wins, Phil Mickelson and David Duvall. And Duvall wasted little time in staking his claim. This birdie at number two gave him the sole lead at four under par. And then, at the toughest hole on the course, the fifth, a rare birdie to five under. But his run didn't last long. Although this was a very good bunker shot, it wasn't quite good enough for the US Open at Pinehurst number two. He would need this putt for a bogey, and he would not get it. Mickelson had scrambled to stay at even par for the day, but at the sixth, his luck ran out. Although this tee shot avoided the sand, it did lead to a bogey. Starting out, I knew it was going to be a difficult day because of the win, and it was. It was difficult to uh, to keep the ball in play off the tee and hit, and hit greens. That's the the opportunity that this course presents. Although we're not seeing very low scores, par is still realistic if each shot isn't just perfect. At the seventh, Duvall was pretty close to perfect. This to set up a birdie to get him back to minus four. Oh, 
been at the eight, a par five converted to a par four for the open. He was right on target again. And then the putt for the lead at five under par. Meanwhile, Mickelson continued to scramble, as only he can. He would sink that to save par at nine. Then, after Duvall suffered a pair of bogeys, Phil had this birdie putt at 12 for a share of the lead. Despite being in position to win the championship, Mickelson still kept it all in perspective. If the beeper goes off, I'm taking a streamline to the airport. That's the that's what's going to happen. She is doing everything that she can uh, to not have the beeper go off. She's seeing the doctor every day. But again, if that if that thing goes off, I'm going to hightail it out of here. Meanwhile, Mickelson had his own work cut out for him. This an opportunity for the outright lead. Many had predicted Mickelson would win this championship because of his innate ability to play shots like this one saving in par at 15. But on Friday, even Phil's short game was getting a thorough workout. Still, a par here would give him the lead. It wasn't to be. He joined Paul Goitas and Payne Stewart, then at minus three. Duvall also had bogeyed 16, but with this next tee shot, he'd ironed out his problems. 15 feet for birdie. But first, Mickelson had this one from about 40 feet. Then Duvall for a share of the lead. Two of the game's greatest stars had gone toe to toe for two days and found themselves together on top of the leaderboard at three under par. Mickelson and Duvall each had shot even par 70 on Friday, and only three others would better that score. One of them, Jeff Maggard, whose quiet 69 took him to even par after two rounds. Another was John Houston, who also followed a 71 with a 69 to join Maggard in eighth place, heading into the weekend. One of the day's most exciting rounds came from Paul A. Zinger. Zinger conquered the 15th green with this shot, and then served up some more artistry one hole later. Zinger from the bunker at 16. Finished at 144, plus four for the championship. But perhaps the day's most courageous round belonged to Rocco Mediate, who was out to prove that his opening round of 69 was no fluke. Here at the par three sixth to get to minus one for the championship. Then at the 15th to get back to even. Rocco would finish the day with a 72, plus one for the championship. American Brian Watts, a runner-up at last year's British Open, was looking to make his own move. At 11, he judged this approach perfectly. A three over 73 for the day kept him in the chase. Doing his own chasing was Vijay Singh. After a 69 on Thursday, he was looking to stay even for the day with this par putt on six. Then at the ninth, for a front side 34 and a round of 70, he was within two shots of the lead. Meanwhile, Payne Stewart had played the first nine an even par. While just behind him, Tiger Woods had suffered a pair of bogeys. But at the ninth, Tiger looked to turn things around. That got him back to one under for the championship. He was still at that figure when he hit this approach to the monstrous 489 yard par 4 16. There were 
only three birdies all day on this brute of a par four, but it turned out to be a missed opportunity for Tiger. He had another chance at 17, but once again, could not convert. In an open championship, pars are good, and Tiger did make a very impressive one at 18. His 71 kept him under par for the championship and left him in excellent position for the weekend. But Tiger and everyone else would have to deal with Payne Stewart, who was managing this golf course expertly. That pitch enabled him to save par at 14. And after a superb tee shot at 15, he had this for a share of the lead. But then trouble at the 16th, until this third shot. And this putt. Payne Stewart, already the Open champion eight years earlier, knows what it takes to win the national championship. Any U.S. Open calls for, for great patience, and uh, this golf course takes a lot of patience. It, uh, you have to really think about where you want your ball to finish. After a par at 17 and this par-saving putt at 18, no one played Pinehurst number two for the first two days with a greater resolve than Payne Stewart. As the only player to shoot two rounds in the 60s, Stewart joined Duvall and Mickelson on top of the 36-hole leaderboard. Where 23 players bettered par for 18 holes, now only seven were in red figures through 36. The cut came at seven over par, and 68 players were within 10 shots of the lead going into the weekend. But some of the game's biggest names would have to wait until next year at Pebble Beach. The Open is just that, open to anyone with a USGA handicap index of 1.4 or less. Tennessee's Memphis National Golf Club played host to this year's largest field of qualifiers. 116 players competed for just 24 spots. In 90 degree heat, they played 36 holes. Among those who failed to qualify were three PGA Tour veterans. Carlos Franco won himself a spot, along with Wake Forest grad, Jay Haas. I played my way into the open and I played my way out of the open. So I, I think that it, you know, the best players are in there and, and if I can qualify, then I'll count myself among those. If not, then, uh, you know, I shouldn't be there. Just gotta tee it up. If you wanna play, you gotta do it. Jay's solid play through the first two rounds earned him a pass through the weekend. The low amateur title went to Hank Keeney. His plus seven through 36 made him the only amateur player to make the cut. As play began for round three, a host of young stars and seasoned veterans at the top of the leaderboard put on their game faces and prepared for battle. They came to the first tee with different backgrounds, different strengths, different golf pedigrees and resumes, but on this Saturday afternoon, each of them had the same intent to make a move on moving day. But before any one of them would tee off, an explosive move came from Steve Stricker. Stricker was two over par for the championship when he hit this shot from the left-hand fairway bunker at the third. A miraculous eagle, Stricker would shoot the low round of the day a 69. Spain's Miguel Angel Jimenez had quietly positioned himself at two over, but there was nothing quiet about this putt at the fifth. It was the only birdie made on the hole all day long. Jeff Maggard had begun the day at even par, but bogeyed the sixth and seventh, and seemed headed for another bogey at the eighth. That is, until this shot. Maggard posted a 74. The day's penultimate pairing showcased the talents of Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson and it didn't take Mickelson long to show his short game prowess on the opening hole.
while Tiger found trouble early for an opening double bogey. And then there was David Duvall, seeking his first major championship, and the veteran with open experience, both good and bad. Eight years ago at Hazeltine, Payne Stewart sank this putt to win the Open in an 18-hole playoff over Scott Simpson. But last year at Olympic Club, after taking a four-shot lead into the final round, he came to the 72nd hole, needing a birdie to tie. Instead, the title would go to Lee Jansen. So Payne had come to Pinehurst with a score to settle. And with this approach, he showed just how focused he was. A birdie there got him back to even par for the day. At the same hole, and with a similar shot, Duvall got a much less desirable result. Duvall would bogey there and fall back from the pack with a front nine of 40. Meanwhile, Tim Heron was looking to make his way up the leaderboard. After opening with a string of pars, he made his move at number six. With perhaps the best shot of the day, Heron even impressed himself. Tiger was still two over for the day when he found Sand at the sixth and that bit of good fortune enabled him to save his par. This had the makings of a bogey for Payne Stewart at the seventh. But Payne's great approach enabled him to two putt and save his par. Up ahead, Mickelson had this one for birdie and a share of the lead with Stewart at three under. Could Stewart now answer him? That would result in a bogey five. Then after bogeying the ninth, he had this to save par at 10. Three bogeys in a row for Stewart. Now Mickelson had a three shot lead, but after this putt, it dropped to two. Heron, now tied for second, left himself some work at the 15th. But he made it look easy. The other man in second was Vijay Singh, but with this shot at 13, he assured himself of sole possession of second, just one shot off the lead. Meanwhile, Tiger had settled himself after his stumbling start. Hitting fairways and greens, he'd strung together eight straight pars, and this shot left him an easy two putt for number nine. Tiger would remain at one over for the championship, three shots off the lead. But up ahead, the leader was scrambling again. At 14, Mickelson would need to get up and down from here just to save par. I wasn't really worried about what other guys were doing. I was more concerned about, as Bobby Jones would put it, old man par, because ultimately that's going to be the, the, the final say. And at 15, the old man was about to get the better of VJ. Back to even par for the championship. Then from the rough at 16, he gave it all he had in an effort to get home. But that brought another bogey. He would bogey 17 as well for a round of 73 that left him at two over par with one round to go. Tiger's string of pars ended with a bogey at the 14th, but he came right back with his tee shot, the best of the day at number 15. Mickelson missed the green and had this one to save his par. 
pretty good effort, but on the greens of Pinehurst number two, pretty good was not good enough. And so, a stroke lost for the leader. But for one of his pursuers, a stroke gain. Up at 18, Billy Mayfair had one last chance to gain a stroke on par, and in dramatic fashion, he did just that. A 74 put Mayfair at three over for three rounds. Two strokes better than that was Tim Heron after a solid round of 70 that put him in third. Out at 16, Tiger didn't like this swing much. Something in the gallery seemed to bother him. But if that was a miss hit, it was the kind of miss hit that can make a golfer smile. Mickelson, on the other hand, was finding little to smile about, especially after this one missed for a second straight bogey. Now he was back into a tie for the lead with Payne Stewart. And this was Tiger's chance to join them. Another test of patience for Tiger Woods. On his next shot, he found some trouble, but that bit of bunker artistry gave him a chance to save par and gain another stroke on Mickelson, who had made a third straight bogey. And that is exactly what he did. Like Woods, Duvall had steadied himself and played par golf through the back nine, including this great save at 16. He was plus two going into the final round. Now the only man at even par was Payne Stewart, with this chance at 17 to go one under. After a perfect drive at the home hole, Mickelson was in position to attack. A much relieved Mickelson with a birdie opportunity to end the day. Tiger needed this one to return to even par and a tie for the lead, but not quite. This was also to get back to even. And it brought Mickelson a standing ovation. Clearly the Pinehurst galleries appreciated the special pressure Mickelson was bearing this week. Back in the fairway, Payne now needed a birdie to take the outright lead. And with this shot, he gave himself a chance. He had been in firm control of his game for three days. Stewart had the lead again with one round to go. I wanted to give myself a chance to have, you know, to win the golf tournament this year. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing that right now. I, I have to go deal with it just as I had to deal with it last year. And, you know, I think that I'm better in, than I was at this stage last year. And now there was only Stewart under par and only Mickelson even, as Steve Stricker's 69 was the only round of the day under 70. Duvall, Mather, and Maggart all lost a bit of ground but stayed in touch. But for many players, moving day meant a move to the middle of the pack, while others moved toward the back, as this day was won by Pinehurst number two. So after three rounds, only one man stands under par. Payne Stewart, who will take a one-shot lead into the final round of this U.S. Open. Last year, at Olympic Club, he held a four-shot lead into the final Sunday before Lee Jansen rallied to catch him. So can the 42-year-old veteran win his second Open title? Or will Tiger Woods win his second major championship? David Duvall and Phil Mickelson, perhaps the best players in the world without a major championship? Will this be their weekend to break through? But perhaps the biggest obstacle of all? tough Pinehurst number two who will have the patience and the perseverance to survive 
the final round open pressure. There was one other adversary for the final round as well at Pinehurst, Mother Nature, as a bit of wet and windy weather greeted the golfers on Sunday morning. The players at the top of the leaderboard would have their hands full on this day, battling the golf course, the elements, and each other, while also controlling their own nerves through the pressure cooker of the closing holes. Each of them hoped to grab the advantage with a strong start. And Billy Mayfair did. A birdie putt at the opening hole. Jeff Maggard parred the first and then wasted no time with this 40-footer at the second. That took Maggard to plus three, four shots behind Stewart. Then the rain began to really come down, but David Duvall seemed impervious to it on this shot. He made birdies on holes two and three to reach even par, just one shot back. and Tiger seemed to enjoy the wet stuff as well. This shot, splashed from the rough at the first, was on target all the way. An opening birdie for Tiger Woods. Meanwhile, the day's two leading characters had made their entrances. The young challenger hoping to at last make his big mark and the veteran hoping to reverse his fortunes of a year ago. Stewart struck first with a drive down the center of the fairway and this approach right into the heart of the green. And that one would go down to give him a two-shot advantage. Mickelson would have to work hard just to save his par, but his opening hole nerves seemed intact. At the second, Stewart underplayed his approach shot and then underplayed his pitch. And just as quickly, his lead was back down to one. But he came right back with this controlled iron shot. Payne regained his two-shot margin after Mickelson had par. Tiger had given back a stroke at the third, but like Stewart, he too bounced back. This pitch at the par 5 fourth set up an easy birdie. Tiger would navigate the first nine at even par, but his playing competitor would struggle. This soggy side hill lie brought Tim Heron a double bogey at the sixth. Then one hole later, it was more greenside grief and a bogey as Heron fell from the leaderboard for good for the closing round of 75. Perhaps the biggest surprise of the day was the about face by David Duvall, who followed his birdies at two and three with bogeys at six and eight, and then danced with Donald Ross at nine to the tune of a double bogey five. He was never a threat after that and finished the championship at plus seven. And for Duvall, it was yet another day of major disappointment. The PGA champion had held steady with a 34 on the front nine. Then at the par five tent, he took advantage of his length with two strong shots and this pitch to set up a birdie. Back to even par for VJ. But still at minus two was Stewart, and at the seventh, he looked to distance himself from his pursuers. And almost did. Mickelson now had an opening, and this putt was pure perfection. Now he was just a shot behind. Both players parred the eighth, but then both missed the green at the ninth, and that gave Phil another chance to show off his short game magic. But Payne was ready and able to match him. With a pair of pars here, the two leaders completed the front nine in an impressive 34 strokes apiece.
with the green slowed a bit by the rain, everyone seemed to be scrambling successfully. At 11, BJ nearly went from a bunker to a birdie. And a hole later, he made the difficult look easy once again. With another par save, he stayed at even par. At the 10th, Tiger had a birdie in his sights. Until the last roll of the ball. But number 10 would be a turning point for the final twosome. Payne hit this with perfect direction. But imperfect distance. Donald Ross had struck yet again. Then from closer in, Phil punched a sand wedge, one that the green rejected almost immediately. Payne's stance was awkward, but that shot was not up to his standards of this week. He had bogeyed par five on Saturday and would bogey it again on Sunday. From the bunker, Phil had little room, but plenty of game. He would make that to save his par. And so with eight holes left to play, Mickelson and Stewart were tied for the lead at one under. Meanwhile, other players within reach at the start of the day had lost ground. A spate of bogeys took Billy Mayfair to a 75 and a tie for 10. While Steve Stricker just never got anything going, a 73 gave him solo fit. Tiger was still on the prowl, though, at one over. But he didn't help himself any when he missed this par putt at 11. And despite this artful bunker shot at the 12th, he remained three shots behind with six holes left. Mickelson's game seemed to be strengthening as the day wore on. At 12, he found the center of the fairway, and with this shot, set up a two-putt par. That was good enough to take the lead, as Stewart could do no better than a bogey. And now VJ was in a tie for second. And with this putt at 14, he had a chance to tie for first. Tiger, after parring 13, hit this one straight at the stick at 14. But just a bit long. At this point, he needed to seize every chance he had. And he seized this one. Now he was two back with four to play. Stewart was just one back, and he didn't like being there. After Mickelson parred 13, Kane had this to regain a tie for the lead. Rain had never relented on this Sunday afternoon, and neither did VJ Singh until this gopher broke approach at 16. A bogey there would drop VJ to one over par, and that is where he would finish the championship in third place. So it came down to Mickelson, Stewart, and Woods. At 15, Mickelson had a 30 foot putt for birdie. settle for par. Payne needed this one to match him. And so once again, he dropped the shot behind.
At the long 16th, the powerful Tiger Woods had an advantage, and he took it. This then was to pull within one shot of the lead. And the Pinehurst crowds would revel in Tiger's roar. Moments later, Mickelson had a lengthy approach to the same hole. But it wasn't quite long enough. Stewart was also shooting from long range. But he too came up short. Up ahead at 17, Tiger was in the bunker. And certainly not out of the championship yet. Payne's third shot to the 16th was perhaps his worst pitch of the day. And Phil's wasn't much better. And so it would be a battle of the putters. What a stroke that was from Paynes. Meanwhile, could Tiger match a save for save? A disappointing and ill-timed bogey. Back at 16, Mickelson's attempt to match Payne's par. The bogey dropped Phil into a tie with Payne with two holes left. Woods one stroke behind them both. There was determination in Payne Stewart's eyes, and this shot to 17 proved he was determined to win the title. The shot that Phil Mickelson hit said he was equally determined to win. The two balls together were not more than 10 feet from the hole, and yet they were two of the longest putts these men had ever faced. So Payne Stewart had the chance to turn the tide once again. Could he steady his nerves, steady his hands, and pull one stroke ahead with one hole to play? Final green, Tiger Woods had given himself one last chance. He needed to make this and then hope that even par 280 would be good enough. You know, I'm very pleased with the way I play, the way I hung in there. I grinded, grinded my butt off today. I think that's one of the things I, I take away from it, is that I, I know I can win this tournament. There's no doubt about it. But now only two players had a chance to win this championship, and one of them had a very good chance. I stood up there and collected myself pretty well on, on 18T and hit a drive. I, I actually thought that drive was in the fairway. But uh, I got up there and 
I had no chance to even think about the greens. The goal of this shot was just to position himself for an attack on his third. And he was able to do that. But now Mickelson was essentially back in a tie. And after a big straight drive, he could attack with his second shot. at just under 100 yards. Dead at it, but almost 20 feet short. Now, Mickelson had a birdie opportunity on the final hole of the U.S. Open. Valiant par placed him at even par for the championship. His fate out of his hands and into the hands of Payne Stewart. For Stewart, two putts to force a playoff, one putt to win the U.S. Open. One year after his disappointment on the 18th green at Olympic Club, Payne Stewart found redemption on the 18th green at Pinehurst number two. On the final three holes, he had sunk three putts totaling nearly 50 feet. But the one he made at 18 is the one that we'll remember most. I gotta give thanks to the Lord for giving me the, the ability to believe in myself. And, you know, without that, peace that I have in my heart, I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you right now. I never gave up. I kept playing, I kept plugging. I didn't hit the, the great shots at certain times, and then I did hit great shots, and then I'd hit great putts and four chips. And, but I got the job done, and that means a lot to me. I couldn't believe that I, I'd accomplished another dream of mine.